Hello, my name's Tom Carhill. It's Tuesday, the 13th um, of May 2014. This video is about a person that I know um, I've come across. Um, I've only ever seen him in the flesh twice, um, but it only took me the very first time I'd seen him, and it was the first time I'd seen him. I'd never seen him anywhere else. I saw him like in person the first time I saw him. Um, the man's name is Tony Farrell, or at least that's his alias. Um, now, the thing with this Tony character is, um, he mar mixes with lots of other disgusting um, subversives, Marxist subversives. And these aren't, when I'm saying subversives, I'm not saying talking about people who don't like um, the, um, the government or the, um, the monarchy or something. I'm talking about people who um, are trying to subvert the culture. They're cultural Marxists. They're uh, Marxist subversives using horrible tactics. They're very cruel. They're very evil. All of it comes out of the protocols of the Elder Design and um, uh, the Talmud. Obviously, that's their that's their that's their Bible, isn't it? Um, this character, Tony Farrell, the very first time I seen him, um, it, it it was clear where he's coming from. Looking back at it now, but at the time I was half cut, um, and I remember watching this thing because I've, I've been I've been in London. I've had to do a few things. I had to meet my brother to pick some money up, and anyway, I had a few beers, but I remember. So I wasn't on my sharpest, let's just say. But anyway, I was just sat there quietly. And you know it's like when you've had a few drinks, you think, well, I want to keep my mouth shut because I'm, I'm a bit drunk, yeah? Just keep your mouth shut. And he starts going on about how, because this is his story. I'll just quickly so we go into his story. His story is that he was an intelligence analyst for South Yorkshire Police. And they said, to, and all of a sudden he had this sort of like thinking in his head, because he's a Christian. That's his story. I'm not saying he is one. I'm definitely, he is not a Christian. That's for sure, right? And he said, and this pastor he went to said, oh, well, if you're having these concerns that just come to you, like like from Jesus or something, <laughs> about how 7-7 um, and 9-11 possibly weren't, um, weren't actually carried out by Muslims and they might be done by the security services, um, you know, maybe you should just say in your report, put it in your report. Now, I don't, I want to get tied down into, because he comes out of this ridiculous story about this whole thing. Now, some people have told me that he never even worked for South Yorkshire Police. The whole thing is made up, and it's just all lies. So he, there has been no like industrial action to sack him for all this. Now, that's what I'm inclined to believe, because it all just seems t totally too incredible. Right? But the point is, obviously, people, with all these things, they always put cover stories and back stories to get people confused about the minutiae, like going, well, did he write the report, or did he refuse to write the report? Because if he's meant to write reports and refuse to write them, of course he can be sacked. Of course he can be sacked, because that's what his job is. And um, if he wrote the report and put his honest um, assessment in there, then that would be different. But didn't he refuse? They, they get confused about this stuff. But the whole thing has been, <laughs> it's all obviously been made up, right? And the thing is, right, what I want to know with this character, right, because look, look, if you've got, if you need any convincing to know he's absolutely bad news, right, the very first time I've seen him, he hadn't got his public speaking polished up, right? And what he was doing, he was doing that old trick, which it works okay if you're dealing with idiots, and it works okay if you're doing written things over a period of time or presentations, but what he was doing is he was building in lies into his story, right? But the thing is, he was building in lies, and they were too, they were in too quick succession. So even me, half cut, well, more than half cut, could see that he was contradicting himself when he was talking. And the other thing is, he had this preoccupation with being a Christian, <laughs> and he's from Yorkshire. Well, he's probably from Israel, that's where I reckon he's actually been living. Because nobody knows who he is, but I'll get on to that in a minute. The point is, he's got this funny voice uh, from Yorkshire, and he's like, I'm a Christian! And then he kept going on about how, like, what will happen to do with his pension and stuff if he stops working for the police. Now, he wasn't a policeman, but he was like a police worker, you know, civilian worker. And he keeps going on about all this stuff. <laughs> he's going on about his pension, now he'll lose this and he'll lose that. Now, I'm sure, looking back on it, because he never mentioned any of this since, and that wasn't recorded to the best of my knowledge, or it never got put on the internet anyway is he made such a pig's ear of it, because they probably said, look, what you need to focus on is the fact that you're going to lose your pension if, you know, because of your, like, faith, and you're a Christian, so you decided you are going to do it. But instead of that, it just came across like, I'm going to lose this much money, and I'm going to do this, and if I put this much contribution in, this would happen, and he's just going on. And people are, like, wondering, right, so you've, you know, you need support because you've put this report in or not put this report in, and they're sacking you because you're somebody from the inside who's now admitted that it's clearly the government blowing things up like false flag terrorism, right? But he didn't do that. He just started whinging, right? And he came across like, you see, 
it came across like a typical whinging Jew. Yeah, like a stereotypical whinging Jew. Which is like, oh, but my money, where's my money? Oh, yeah. And he kept coming across like, and he kept putting in, I'm a Christian. And I asked him about one thing. I said, because I can't remember exactly what he said. But he said another thing. Uh, then he said this thing and that thing. He said, he was like talking about what his options were going forward. But again, because he kept going on about how much money he was going to lose. Uh, it was, he just kept going on about it. And it was like, it was kind of didn't quite ring true. Because you know, if you say, look, this is what's right. I'm going to lose out because of this. Look, I can explain to you about this thing. But then you get back onto the focus of why you need to do it and why it's important for us all that you're doing it. He didn't do that. And then he said one statement, and this basically just completely wiped the floor with him. You know, he did it himself. He goes, um, <laughs> and my position might change on that at any time. <laughs> I thought, you what? That's like something a bent policeman would say in a kind of like interview where they've got, you know, like in trouble for doing something and they're just like admitting half of it and not the, the bad part. And I said, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. What do you mean it might change? What's going to change about it? Either it's, you know, that's what it is or it's not going to change. You know, and it, do it. I, but you see, the thing is, because these meetings are full of these agitators and like agents, they just all go, no, let him speak, let him speak. So you see, you get kind of shouted down if you actually point out something that's completely wrong and very suspicious. Anyway, the point is, this this Tony Farrell, right, he turns up at everything, right, so he's gone from this thing about the police doing, uh, not not accepting the fact that the government's putting bombs and stuff in uh, the underground and blaming it on Pakistanis, and, and not even managing to fucking blow them up on the trains and they go and escape, they have to shoot them later, and then they report in the paper. It's absolutely nonsense. But the point is that, you know, that the racism in England against Pakistanis, right, there's a, there's a, and also there's a Jamaican, they just, I just think they just threw him in there for a laugh. I mean, it's not a laugh for him, but I think for the purposes of what we're talking about, I think they're just doing that for a little joke, Jamaican suicide bomb. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. But anyway, um, this Tony Farrell um, is definitely, you know, he's, he's trying to get into everything. So, like, he's then gone around um, this major, major hub of um, disinformation and um, Marxist agitation, who is Belinda McKenzie. Now, worryingly, with Belinda, because she's actually got caught doing crimes before, like stealing all the money from Iran Aid, this charity she set up where she just stole all the money. It's meant to be for Iraqi orphans. Several million she stole, and the police didn't do anything about it. We know that she's obviously got state support, and this is a worrying thing because, like, some people think you've got um, sort of, you know, you've got Marxist agitators, you've got an Israeli connection stroke Jewish connection where you've got people trying to, like, agitate for Israel's purposes to start wars and stuff. And they're like, aligned with the government and probably in the government. But they don't understand that you've actually got... They think of there's sort of three different interest groups which are kind of intermingled. But they don't understand that you've got an outright Marxist, communist agenda being pursued by the government, be it Labour, Liberal or Conservative. They, they don't understand that. But with Belinda McKenzie, she kind of proves it because... She is actually, in everything she does, it's acting against the people of the country in everything she does. She's indiscriminately just acting against anybody, right? And she's allowed to do any crime she wants, and she's got complete protection. So that, she's a very, very worrying character. But the point is, Tony Farrell has got involved with her, and they set up this thing that's not a charity, but it tends to be. It's got a website and everything, and it's called Options Not Adoptions. Now, this Options Not Adoptions, right, is all to do with children who've been taken off the parents and they've been put into adoption and she's sort of claiming she can do something about it and make sure that you know they get to see them again and they like go to get to stay with their grandparents or something absolute lies and absolute evil totally totally beyond the pale for a normal person to be able to believe right only the only way you can get into understanding how evil she is is if you start reading the talmud and um you know, get lots and lots of um, Jewish subversive brainwashing. Otherwise, you're never ever going to be able to be that evil. Most people have a bad, like, you know, they've got cowardice, jealousy. Cowardice and jealousy are their main drives. For most people, it is. But the point is, there's a certain level to which they'll go to. Do you know what I mean? They might turn a blind eye to things, but they won't go out on a campaign to absolutely, like, terrorise and ruin people's lives and agitate them to a sort of severe state of agitation. That's, that's beyond most people's belief. But that's um, another Jewish subversive um, communist called Saul Alinsky. He explains that's exactly what you've got to do. It's not man and bull. It, you just fuck the bull. Just go for the man. You just attack the person. Ad hominem attacks. You know, that, that's the tactic. And this is why they like to agitate people. And who better to agitate than people who are already... Well, I don't know if the word agitates the word. They're beyond agitated, aren't they? If they're having their children taken off them... 
and no due process has been followed and <laughs> they'll be absolutely devastated and they're picking on those people because they're already hyper agitated so this is like nouveau Saul Alinsky rules for radicals because what they do is they don't agitate them they're already agitated so all they take is a little bit of a push in the right direction and they can cause all sorts of absolute disastrous consequences to resolve it Tony Farrell's involved with that he keeps going on about being a Christian like this in this really weird way, like a rhyme. You know, when someone doesn't really believe something, it's like a sort of mantra he's been told to keep saying it. And then you look at him sideways and think, he's got a great big honking nose. He's a Jew, isn't he? Right? Now, think of it another way, right? He can be a Jew, fair enough. Not, not, no problem there, necessarily, right? However, why has nobody said, well, I mean, I've heard somebody tell me, no, he never worked for South Yorkshire Police, never heard of him. Where has Tony Fowl been the last few years? Because nobody said to me, oh, no, I knew him. He used to work in, like, Camping International in Gillingham. You know, nobody's ever said anything like this. But loads of, mo everybody who's got any brains sees straight through it. So why haven't they come up with this yet? Where has Tony Fowl been? I'm not saying that Tony Fowl's got any, um, anywhere near. I don't even think he's got an average intelligence. I think he's very evil, and he's, he's a bit like an Ed, Ed Miliband. Obviously, no one's as evil as him, but he's like, <coughs> no brains whatsoever, but absolute evil intent. So, the worst, for some reason, like, whenever Ed Miliband's involved with anything, people realise it must be bad, and they don't have anything to do with it. So, it's some kind of double bluff, and that's, there's something like that working with Tony Farrell, because it's absolutely, look, the people who train Jewish subversives in Israel to go and, like, bring in Marxist systems, they're, they're, they're not stupid, right? They, these people are clever. They're very clever, right? And they know exactly how it's done. So they haven't sent Tony Fowell over to actually, you know, be a proper agent. He's going to get exposed straight away as one. Obviously, they won't want it to be linked back to them. You know, they want it to be linked back to the British government or something. But, you know, I don't really buy that one, unless they're the same thing. But, you know, the whole point is he was always going to get caught. He was always going to get instantly recognised. And now he's come out with another thing that he's doing in, in conjunction with these poor people who've lost their children and he's agitating them or, you know, causing them to be completely agitated. He's, he's got involved with this story about this black lady who's obviously mentally ill called, or pretending to be called Charles Seven. That's, I, I, know, I, I, know, I know lots of black people. None of them are called Charles or Seven if they're women. Uh, anyway, that being said, and apparently the 7-7 seven, seven bombings were caused to scare her off some copyright thing. Again, so ridiculous and beyond belief, you know, I can't even believe anyone would come up with it. Um, of course, if you think of it in subversive terms, you don't care about not being believed. It's a trick just to agitate. So my name's Tom Kyle. It's Tuesday, the 13th of March, May 29th, 2014. Thanks very much.